Hey guys, how's it going? Um, hope you had a great day today. Uh, the video we're going to do tonight is going to be about the difference in temperatures required for silver soldering versus brazing. And what I've done is I've taken a piece of three quarter inch copper pipe. I've swedged the end of the pipe open to simulate uh, what it would look like at a king valve on an outdoor unit. And then I've actually taken a measurement off the train unit that we have here in the shop and put the clamp exactly where the body of the king valve would be. So what I'm gonna do, I already have it prepped. Um, I have a piece of copper ready to go in. I'm gonna start heating it up and we're gonna, I'm gonna let you guys watch the um, temperature gauge. It's hooked on. While I'm uh, heating it, to make the solder joint so you can see how warm that gets without any uh, wet rags or anything like that on it. As you can see that we still have a very steady climb there temperature wise and the uh, king valve on any unit uh, should never exceed 250 degrees in temperature so that's silver soldering um, the temperature required to melt silver solder is I believe somewhere around seven or eight hundred degrees um, and we're almost up to 200 now we didn't put any rags on it but uh, it, it got dangerously close to that, uh, you know, we we're getting up in the 200 degree range. So there you have your silver solder joint. Now, not that I recommend this, I still um, at least wet rag uh, inside of an evaporator cabinet with a TXV bulb, even if we are silver soldering the joint simply because it's not worth the risk for what it takes to throw a couple wet rags um, on a joint just to make sure that you're not overheating that TXV bulb. Um, but let me go ahead and get this set up for brazing uh, with the other piece of pipe and you're going to see a huge difference in how warm that pipe gets. I'm actually concerned about melting the clamp that I have on there to read it. So I'll be right back with you in a few seconds. All right, guys, got the uh, the new piece of pipe in, and I'm just waiting for the temperature probe to get back roughly to the same temperature that the other one was at. As you can see, we're getting pretty close. We're at 67 degrees. I think we were at like 63 when we started with the last one. Um, the only other thing I want to note is I did put a small piece of a wet rag on one side of my clamp. I'm really hoping not to damage the clamp with the temperatures that we're going to see here. Um, it, if the clamp starts to melt or something, I'm going to stop the video and we'll have to think of another way to, uh, to measure that temp. But uh, here we go. Let me get you guys back in front. We're at 66 degrees. We're using um, a regular uh, turbo torch setup with 15% uh, uh, silver braze.
So there you have it guys. We have successfully melted the O-rings inside of that uh, king valve and most likely caused permanent damage to the unit that we're trying to install. Now, I know that 250 degrees is probably a, um, a kind of a guideline that they don't want you to exceed, but uh, you're so much better off ragging everything um, just, to, uh, just to make sure that you're not damaging the, the unit that you're working on. We will do, um, once I get back in the school, there's some fittings and stuff that I had ordered up for us that came in since we've been off. Um, I'm gonna do a demonstration for you guys of brazing with and without nitrogen and explain to you why that's so important. Uh, we'll have to braze a, a line without and braze a line with it and then take a porta band and cut down the middle so you can see what happens inside the pipe when you don't use nitrogen. So that's our little tip for today. Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you real quick uh, about the differences between silver solder and uh, silver brazing. Um, silver brazing has been kind of the industry standard at least since 410A refrigerant came out because of the elevated pressures with 410A. Um, it's just a standard uh, brazing rod, you know, normally they come two feet long or whatever um, and most manufacturers recommended 15%. Uh, I actually had a, an issue with a TXV valve that um, the stubs on either side of the TXV valve were only about an inch and a half long. I contacted the equipment manufacturer they recommended or stated that it had to be brazed in. Um, I made multiple attempts using uh, heat paste, using uh, wet rags, anything I could think of to um, be able to install this without overheating it because there again, the TXV only wants to be 250 degrees and you have a brazing torch that's exceeding 2000 degrees an inch and a half away from it. Uh, needless to say, after a few failed attempts, um, I actually contacted the manufacturer of the TXV and they stated that there's no way in the world you can do that with Braze that you need to use silver solder. Um, after that, I started to use silver solder periodically on new installations, almost kind of as a test. Um, and this is the product that was recommended. The, the label on this is wasted, so it's hard to see, but it's called Stay Bright 8. And um, the biggest difference between this and a braze joint is you have to make sure that everything's clean. Um, you know, sand cloth, uh, wire brushes, you know, clean all your fittings really good. And then you use a flux. And one of the reasons why... Um, there's a lot of kickback with using this method is they are afraid of the acidity from the flux getting into the refrigerant oil and or the refrigerant. Um, I've been using it for four or five years and I have had less issues with silver solder than I have with Breeze. Um, so just to give you a little bit more of a background on the video that I did tonight, um, that kind of sums it up, you know, the differences between uh, the silver solder and the silver braze. Uh, I, d I don't question the braze being slightly stronger. It's supposed to be a little bit more vibration resistant from what I've read online. But um, like I said, I haven't had any issues with it in over four years now. So um, there you have it. I uh, hope you guys liked the video, and I'll uh, see you tomorrow.